All right, how's it going, guys? So on my Twitter account, I found this tweet here. It was it was trending for some reason, even though at the time that it was trending, it didn't have very many retweets and likes. I think it had maybe 500 or something like that. And it was still trending. So this is an example of Twitter's bias showing by pushing forward at the narr this narrative. Um, so this is just a list of, you know, I ideas that Denmark has put into place that they that socialists think are acceptable and beneficial and this person is saying that these should be implemented in the United States now let me address a discrepancy here so what I'm going to be addressing in this video is I'm gonna be addressing this tweet and then also some tweets I received from someone else in my responses to this and so we're gonna go through that direction, but the point that I'm going after is these ideas being introduced into the United States. Because there's some debate about whether these are successful in Denmark or not, but even if they are successful, it's in a country where the population size is ridiculously small. If you, if you implement these in a country 100 times the size or whatever the the actual size difference is with way more diversity these ideas break down and don't work at all so that's one discrepancy that needs to one one thing that needs to be mentioned is that fact right there and there's also a response that I may show if I find it easily in my feed but someone actually responded to this who lived in Denmark and talks about how these ideas aren't even actually successful in Denmark let alone would they, how would they be successful here. So I'm going to go through this list really quickly, doing a short little rebuttal to each of these points that he makes, and then I'm going to go through the responses afterwards. This might turn out to be a little bit of a long video, but that's because I want to cover, there's a lot to cover in this video. But the very first thing, tuition-free college. Absolutely, that's a great idea if you want to destroy the value of a college education. Right now, in the United States, the value of a college education, I mean, they, they have graphs on this. If you graduate high school versus if you graduate college, the amount of money that you're going to earn is way different, is leaps and bounds different, and that's going to be completely destroyed if you allow free college because anybody can get into college. And it's going to be a, a much higher supply with a lot less demand. It's going to be harder to get jobs. You're, I mean, you're going to be causing just a lot of issues. Not only that, but also the fact that this would lose a lot of revenue generated from tuition. Having a, the value of college degrees is, is pivotal to making sure that certain fields like accounting, for example, remains with the highest tier people doing the jobs versus just anybody because anybody can get into college to get the degree. It, 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 it weeds people out and it gets the best of the best, which is a meritocracy, getting these jobs and getting these degrees. For the most part, there are exceptions, but tuition-free college is a terrible idea and should not be implemented here because it would completely destroy the value of a college education. Completely destroy it. Uh, free healthcare. Sure. Uh, I mean, you know, there's, there's a debate around this and my issue with the debate is if you look at um, if you look at what you're getting for your money, the value or the quality of universal healthcare or free healthcare for everyone, the healthcare system diminishes tremendously. If you look at any country that has universal healthcare, the quality of the healthcare as well as the timing to get said healthcare is disgusting. It's terrible because there, it's I mean because it, there's there's not that competition. There's not that that revenue to to create a better healthcare system. It's 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 without a doubt, without a doubt, destruction of the quality of the healthcare system. I mean, I, I made this point a long time ago where I tweeted about how, of course, my cat always gets feisty whenever I'm making videos. About how, you know, because of this, this is the exact reason why Canadians can't get health care, can't get the health care they need to survive. So they come to the U.S. or they go to, they, they do have like private hospitals and private care units in Canada. They either go to those or they come to the United States. I had someone respond to me that they're like, oh, well, only, only 30,000 Canadians a year come to the U.S. for health care, which I was like, 
what are you expecting? 30,000 is a fuck ton to come here because of health, because they can't get healthcare help in their own country. Universal healthcare, free healthcare diminishes the quality, diminishes the timing. I mean, if you look at the at like the average time it takes to get an MRI, MRI here versus an MRI in Canada, it's disgusting. Free healthcare, bad idea. Also ex extremely expensive. Paid parental leave, we don't have mandate, we don't have it mandated, but it's basically universal that every company offers paid parental leave to an extent. Um, I, the, the person, I mean, actually we're gonna get, I'm not gonna go into that cause we're gonna get into that in a minute. Uh, paid vacation, you have paid vacation for all the jobs that deserve paid vacation. If you're a burger flipper at McDonald's, I don't think you deserve paid vacation. I mean, you can take a vacation anytime you want, you just don't get paid. And it's because you have minimal skills. You have replaceable skills easily. Uh, you, the, like the job that I work, I don't, I'm not easily replaceable. In fact, the company I work for, when it comes to hiring accountants, they struggle because there's not a ton of accountants out there. And so, you know, it's not easily replaceable. There's, I, I have a lot of leeway. And so it's, they all have to offer paid vacation. And, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of companies, a lot of sectors offer paid vacation. It's pretty universal. In, it, it, it's universal in the jobs that matter, that contribute heavily to the, uh, to, the, to the economy and to the country, but not just like a burger flipper at McDonald's. I, I don't agree that they should have paid vacation. Uh, you know, if you, want, if you want something good like that, get a better job. Do, do more with your life than being, being a burger flipper at McDonald's. Uh, living wage of $20. Uh, so here's the issue with the living wage of $20. If you raise the minimum wage, one of two things happens. Uh, one, well, I'm, I, no, I'm not going to go with that, down that route either because we're going to go into that with the replies as well. But you basically destroy the economy. Uh, or not destroy the economy. You destroy the dollar. Sorry. Big difference. You destroy the dollar. And so all that would do is that would inflate everything because when wages increase, then prices increase. And so then everything just be, be, becomes more expensive. So everything stays relatively the same. Uh, what is considered a living wage will then increase and go way above $20 because someone at McDonald's flipping burgers shouldn't be earning a living wage. They're not doing a, a, a job that's worth any amount of skill. Um, and the, the other thing, the, the main point related to that is if everything stays consistent and it will, then what will happen is everyone will get raised into a higher tax bracket. If you earn $9 an hour and then you get raised to $20 an hour, you're going to be bumped up to a higher tax bracket where you're going to pay a higher percentage of revenue, a uh, higher percentage of your income, and then you're going to keep less. You're going to be, be poorer. You're not going to be able to afford. So that gallon of milk will become, you know, whatever percentage of your revenue it is before, that's going to increase to a higher percentage and you're not going to be able to afford it as easily because you're in a higher tax bracket, which is a part of the progressive taxation, a couple points below it, which we also have. Uh, shorter work week. I mean, I'm not lazy. You should work five weeks, uh, five days a week minimum. And if you don't want to work that, you're lazy and you deserve to be paid less. Simple as that. Progressive taxation, we have that. I don't know why that's on here. Cheap prescription drugs. Uh, I mean, your insurance, usually. Like, I, I, I had uh, something called C. diff, if you... Google it. It's like, it's, I think it's like a bacteria thing. I got it in the hospital. I got this like C. diff infection and I had to get these, these, this medicine to, to cure it. And the medicine, I, I, I want to say it was like $50 a pill and I had to take three pills a day. But after insurance, it was like $6 a pill or something like that. Like something ridiculous. No, it was, it was like $6 a day and I only had to take it for a week. So six times, it was only a five day week. So six times five, that's $30. Yeah. So $30 really wasn't that expensive to get rid of an inf infection that was killing my stomach, basically. Uh, over a five-day period, I mean, if you work any any job, you're going to earn, earn way more than that. So, I mean, if you have insurance, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, free, pro free public child care, that would also dim diminish the quality of uh, child care. I mean, same, sa same thing if you have a universal care system like that there'd be no reason to go into that field because there'd be no money in that field the quality of the care would significantly decrease and if if there was free public health care then what would happen is there'd be free public health care and then there'd be private child care health care free public child care and then there'd be private child care and everyone would still go to the uh, private child care because or a lot of people would because that's where uh, that's where the quality child care is and then the public child care will be a horrible quality and won't be good for the kids. 
It won't be good for their safety and it won't be good for their upbringing. You need a good quality system to, to raise kids for when their parents are, are you know, at work. Uh, second happiest country, you know, once again, it, it, I, I've seen I've seen this this survey to talk about happiness, and there's there's so much that goes into this that just because you're happy doesn't mean it's the best thing for you. Like a drug addict, when they get when they get more meth, they're happy, but it's not the best thing for them. Being the happiest country isn't necessarily being the best country. Uh, so that there's two there's a pretty big discrepancy to be made there. And then, you, you know, for example, for in, in, a, in a system like this, for the lazy worker who, you know, wants to not do anything with their lives and wants to flip burgers, they're going to be a lot happier because they're going to get paid more. But the people who actually contribute to society a lot, the, the, the businessmen, the inventors, the innovators, they're going to be a lot less happy because they're not going to make as much money. They're going to have the shit taxed out of them, et cetera. So... You know that this this isn't a good point as to why we should adopt any of the policies. Um, and this are not radical ideas. Good English. These are not radical ideas. Well, whereas I, I actually would kind of agree, they're not necessarily radical ideas. But just because they're not radical ideas doesn't mean they're good ideas. Uh, I would say the majority of these are just plain bad ideas. And the ones that aren't, like paid parental leave, we already, we basically already have progressive taxation. It is, this is a bad idea that we already have, too. I mean, we need to get a flat tax system, not a progressive taxation. We need to lower the hell out of taxes. But, yeah. That's, uh, so that's where it started. And then, I, so I responded to that basically along those same lines. And so then, then I started, this Kid 4 started responding. And he was taking it point by point. So he said, we have paid leave and vacation in the United States. There's no federal or state law mandating paid leave or vacation time, which is it's, it's that's accurate but it's not needed uh tax rich too much the wealthier tax lower than any other time in history 35 percent we used to have the highest tax rate of 93 percent during world war ii he says this as if it's a good idea to have a marginal tax rate of 93 percent that is how you stifle innovation innovate uh, invention innovation and hard work if i'm at a point where if i work harder i that my next dollar has 93 percent taken away i'm not going to work any harder that's going to completely destroy that. 93% is just absurdly high. And 35%, although it still is the lowest point than any other time in history, it's still way too high. Just straight up. I mean, that, that's pretty much all that needs to be said about that. Um, I, I already clicked that. Uh, so I responded to that. So... Let's see, this one here. Hurt small businesses. If small businesses are privately owned chains in a city, I have no sympathy. It's good that you have no sympathy for privately owned chains. Good, good way to show your bias. They're not entitled to a consumer's money for merely existing. Never said they were. They need to find a way to adapt, increases pr increasing prices by a buck, or go out of business. Well, I mean, if you raise wages by over uh, 200 or over 100%, you're going to have to raise prices by more than a buck, which that goes back to what I was saying about, you know, basically keeping everything consistent and therefore destroying the dollar. Um, and then, and then this is the beautiful thing. So I talked about how, if you raise it to $20, you're going to hurt, uh, you're going to hurt small businesses. Those people who, those mom and pop shops on the corner, they're going to be devastated by shit like this. And this person goes on to say, actual small businesses like sole proprietorships and family-owned small businesses may be affected and we should protect them. You're absolutely right, except for they will be affected and you should protect them by not enacting a $20 minimum wage. That's fucking ridiculous. They're going to be hurt and the best way to protect them is not enact the very thing that's going to hurt them. Protect them by keeping wages as they are, or even lowering the minimum wage and allowing competition to price where wages should be at. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about capitalism, is take McDonald's, for example, McDonald's Burger Flip. If you abolish the minimum wage, what'll happen? Well, McDonald's will be like, okay, we're hiring burger flippers. Let's try for free. Does anybody want to work for free with no benefits? No, no takers. Okay. One penny. Who wants to work for one penny an hour? Any takers? No, no takers. It'll work like that until they reach a, a point, an apex. This is called supply and demand. If you take an ex ec economics class, you'll understand. You'll learn this. 
it, it, it's called supply and demand. They'll reach a point where people will start finally taking those jobs. I don't know where that would be. Maybe it's a dollar per hour. Maybe it's eight dollars an hour. I have no idea. And it's a minimum skill job with unlimited number of replacement people. And so that way they'd be able to they'd be able to price it at wherever people are willing to take the job. If you have minimum skills, you shouldn't earn. I don't think you should even earn nine dollars an hour. It takes no skill whatsoever to be a burger flipper at McDonald's. I'm sorry if, if that's insulting to anybody. I understand people have to do what they do to get by. But if you want to be successful in life, get a, a high school education or a GED, go to college and t- get, a, get a degree in a good career, in a good, good field so you can get a good career. But then what they want to do is they want to then you know, have free college so that it completely destroys that aspect. And so you don't even have that, that way to go. I mean, th- this part here, I, I, I was just livid. I was basically like, y- you're literally saying may be affected, which they will be affected. And you're admitting that they may be affected and we need to, we, we need to protect them. We need to protect them by not enacting that plain and simple, plain and simple. Lower healthcare quality. Healthcare is already rationed out for profit insurance industry. Our healthcare system is the best in the world. Well, in, in, in some regards. When it comes to how quickly you can receive care. When it comes to the actual quality of the care that you receive. We are way better than any other country, especially the ones with these universal healthcare systems. Because they just destroy the quality of the healthcare system destroy the value of a college education they've already been turned worthless since employers intentionally removed job positions to gain more profit since 2008 this is absolutely false 100 percent false because me it may sound anecdotal but it's not worthless because me right here the entire reason why i have this job where i'm at where i'm able to afford a nissan gtr at 23 years old is because i went through college and I worked hard through college going towards a degree that I knew would pay me well. So that way, when I graduated, I had a job. I got a job, a really good job at a company that only hires people with college degrees for these types of jobs. They hire people without college degrees elsewhere, but for these types of jobs. And so that's value right there. They're not turned worthless. And yeah, some job positions have been removed, but they can't remove that many job positions. And the ones, the, the job positions that they want filled, like mine, for example, they only want people, like a lot of the really good jobs, they only want people with college degrees. So that's a heart, a, a serious value, serious value in college degrees right there. Um, let's see. So here's talking about the, uh, so I said, correct, no mandate, but it's still offered everywhere. Not available everywhere in the United States and especially not in retail or fast food in the United States, especially not at McDonald's or Walmart. Now this is really funny because This is like my favorite part of this whole conversation is that he brings up, oops, he brings up Walmart. Why is Walmart so funny? Because Walmart didn't offer paid, uh, paid maternity and parental leave up until, I can't remember what year it was. Um, Hang on, let me Google this real quick. Walmart parental leave. January, 2018. Yeah. So that uh, when the new tax policy was put in place they got this tax cut which all the liberals were crying oh the ceos are just going to pocket that or the the board of directors or the the shareholders are going to pocket that no guess what they did walmart then offered paid parental leave paid parental and um uh yeah paid parental leave because of a tax cut which is exactly what this person opposes so the thing they're complaining about was fixed buy lower taxes, which is something that they complain about at a different point. I, I thought that was hilarious. But this goes back to what I was saying. If you work at McDonald's, I mean, if you're a salaried person at McDonald's, you have, you have leave. You have parental leave, you have vacation time, you have everything. If you're an hourly worker, you're not contributing much to society at all. At all. You have a very replaceable job with no, no skills that set you apart whatsoever. I don't really think you deserve that type of leave. Now, if you want to have a kid, then you can have a kid. No worries. You can take that time off. You just won't get paid because you don't have, you don't have those skills. You're easily replaceable. And that's, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. 
So here, uh, so I, I was talking about the 35 marginal tax rate being too high. So why not just admit you want to abolish taxes for everyone and advocate for libertarian user, user fees? Taxes are the price you pay for a civilized society. I agree with this last part right here. That's why I don't want to abolish taxes. I don't think taxes should be entirely abolished. I think they need to be lowered to a point where they're not ridiculously high on everybody who pays taxes. What I believe in personally is I believe in a flax ta rate, flax tax rate, flat tax rate, there we go, across the board at somewhere between like 10 or 15%. That's a very moderate and very, very solid starting tax rate. And from there, you see how much it affects people. Does it stifle innovation or does it help innovation to lower taxes? If so, maybe lower it even more, maybe go 8%. Do we still see a boom? Maybe go 5%. But have, have taxes in there because we still need re some revenue generated through taxes, obviously, for a civilized society to function. 100% agree with that statement, but no, I don't want to actual, actually abolish taxes. Um, here I was talking about um, here, here's my direct response where I said, maybe affected and we should protect them perhaps by not mandating a $20 minimum wage. And I did the, sh the shrugging emoji. Uh, why not admit to abolishing the minimum wage and be done with it and have uni unions determine minimum wages? I don't want unions to determine minimum wages. Uh, what I want is I want uh, the, the free market and, and ca uh, capitalism to do its job and allow people to compete. So this is... Um, this is exactly what I was talking about, about pricing. So, you know, if you're talking about a job that's easily replaceable, there's a lot of supply. And so as a result, the price that, you know, you, you, there's a lot more people who'd be willing to work for a lot less. And so then the pricing point for like a burger flipper would be a lot lower. I would probably get like guests, it, it would end up being somewhere around like three or $4 an hour is what they'd end up paying people, which is, you know, which I would like. Because what that would do is that would encourage people to make better decisions in their life so they're not working full-time at McDonald's being a burger flipper. Unless they're working full-time at McDonald's being a burger flipper while they're in college. I still don't think they should be paid more, but that's the job that they wish to take. Now, I worked in college, but I worked a job that paid a lot more than minimum wage because I, I uh, applied myself in my accounting classes and got an accounting internship. And so that way I was able to get paid a lot more because I, I provided a lot more. In fact, I was doing the job of a full-on financial analyst there that's paid a lot more than a minimum wage. And so that's, it, it would encourage people to, do, to make better decisions with their life so they're not stuck working a job that pays 3 to $4 an hour. Absolutely, the minimum wage should be abolished with one, one key point that needs to be made. And so I, I don't know if I responded to this or not. Um, I'm sorry for jumping around a little bit. I, I don't think I did. Someone responded. I, I, do I have to go to like tweets and replies or what is it? Yeah, this one. Um, yeah, so this uh, Su Suzanne responded. Um, she said, the problem with removing the minimum wage is business is already reaping windfall, corporate and CEO profits with the minimum wage. The ratios shown below were up until 2013. Imagine what the figures show post Bezos and all. I'm a capitalist, but the ratio of CEO corporate versus worker is obscene. I agree. Um, I, I do agree with that. And that, that's kind of the problem, like like talking about taxes and talking about minimum wage is they're already set too high and that becomes the standard. So that's where everything's built around. So it's a lot tougher to remove. It's, it's a lot tougher to ab actually abolish minimum wage without causing an issue like that to happen. However, I don't agree that if, you know, if the minimum wage dropped from like $9 to like $4, I don't believe that that whole gap, which that would be a lot of money saved in wages, would go straight to the to the CEOs. You know, same thing with these tax cuts. When you look at what happened when these companies got these tax cuts, they gave a, a lot back to their employees in like the parental leave, for example. I think there was also some companies that were giving out just bonuses, just cash bonuses in their, their paychecks. So I, I don't believe that it all would go that way. I think that it would go some of the way for the, the employees who seriously contribute to the company. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my only disagreement with that, but I do agree that there, there is that huge discrepancy between what CEOs are paid and what the, the workers are paid. Um, with some exceptions, like the CEO of the company I work for, he actually doesn't take 
too massive of a paycheck for being the CEO of a, a company that generates over 15 billion a year in, in revenues. He doesn't take as big of a, pay, a paycheck as you would think he would take. And this man works, you don't even wanna know how many hours this man works. When he's on vacation, he's working. When he's at home, uh, he's working. He, he works through, he works uh, Monday through Friday and most uh, almost all weekends. He's basically always working. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he worked um, minimum of 80 hours a week, like absolute minimum of 80 hours a week. This man is always working. I think he deserves to be paid a, a fuck ton more than he's paid right now, but that's just, yeah. Let's see. Um, it's always my response. Abolishing minimum wage, hollow 0%. So this was talking about taxes again. So here we go. So I talked about, uh, I, because I believe in capitalism and the free market working, I agree that minimum wage should be abolished. Free market, that means you're a neoliberal. I don't really know what you mean by that. Believing in the free market means I understand how the free market works and understand how it, that it does work. It's, plain and simple. Joe Biden and Trump will welcome you with open arms because they're both the same. So uh, that may be the case, but there's also a lot of other people who are just, in, you know, smart enough to realize that the free market works. I'm not a fan of Trump, but if, if he's, if he believes in the free market, then he's intelligent in that sense of the free market. Uh, I, I didn't know Joe Biden did as well. Uh, that's, that's, I guess that's one thing then, then that I agree with Trump on. I almost never agree with Trump, but that's one thing that I agree with him on. Um, I, I, I like how you put this label on me. That doesn't make me a neoliberal that I believe in one thing. The free market is something that works. Capitalism is something that works. Competition is something that works. The invisible hand is something that works. These are all economic theories and in, in, in just descriptions of how, ec how, how economic works in general. I mean, it, seriously, go to college, take at least two economics classes. You'll understand how this shit works. With simple laws of, like simply supply and demand, you'll understand how a lot of these ideas you support don't work. Or they don't work well, or they're harmful, or they, they're completely destructive. That's just, it's, it's basic economic principles that disprove everything that was said in the original tweet. Well, not everything, but a lot of what was said in the original tweet and a lot of what this person, Jacob Four, is, is, is typing. Um, uh, let's see. And then he just, he, neoliberalism, it just works. Um, Apple Corporation that engages daily, that engages daily economic treason. I would definitely want a source for this. Um, and I'd also want a definition of what economic treason is. The only thing I can think of that, that, uh, liberals would think a, a, a economic treason is, is these companies, like Apple's the biggest one, where they keep their cash overseas to avoid the taxes that they would incur by bringing them back into the country. If, that, if that's what you're referring to, which I'm not trying to straw man you, so you, that may not be what you're referring to. If that, if that is what you're referring to, that's not economic tre uh, treason. You don't, treason is where you're betraying your country. Our country is betraying them by trying to force them to receive double taxation. They're already taxed. They were, these were revenues received outside of the US. They were already taxed outside of the US at whatever the, the tax rate there is. And then now they're trying to import it to the US, but they'd be taxed heavily again. Uh, Trump was considering waiving this for a couple of years so that companies could bring this cash back in the United States. And so that way it would help our economy out. But he, I, they never ended up doing that. And so the, this money is staying outside the country. This isn't treason by any means. It's being smart. The, the, the US should not commit double taxation on incoming funds from outside the country. They should promote it. That way the money, that way we have more money coming back to the United States and helping out our economy. But now this money is stuck outside of the United States. If you're talking about engages in daily economic treason, I'm not sure what else you could be referring to about Apple Corporation. That's the only thing with Apple that I could think of. Uh, other than that, they don't, they don't commit treason in any, in any way, shape or form. Um, economic treason that is an interesting word. I've actually never heard that term before. Economic treason. I've just heard treason. So, yeah. I can, and, and you like your the W E R K S. You're trying to make me sound like an idiot. Like, oh, neoliberalism. Neoliberalism. It just works. No, I'm not saying it does. The free market does. Capitalism does. Competition does. It just works. It does. It literally just does. And you can mock me all you want for saying that, but 
reality is reality. Uh, and then last thing here, this is the this is the tweet. So this guy right here, release uh, Mimo sixty six. I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I'm but but butchering. I can't talk right now. Butchering your name. Uh, I also like the the Fredo's anger. That's that's pretty that's pretty funny. So. Uh, what he said is, I lived in Denmark for five years, 60% tax rate, VAT tax rate at 25%. Cars and homes are four times the cost compared to US. I've heard at least a minimum of two times, but it varies. And so I, I, four times doesn't surprise me at least. $50 tax every year on each TV, computer, and phone you own. You're assigned a doctor and cannot change, which this part is a little, like, this part's kind of debatable and kind of controversial. Denmark closed 55 out of 110 hospitals in 2011. People die on wait lists. Yeah. So, I mean, great tweet. Uh, there's a reason you got responses um, like this and, 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 and got these retweets and stuff is because, I mean, what you're saying here is accurate. Like, the original tweet isn't even accurate because these don't even fully work properly in Denmark. And so here here is sort of the argument for that. I don't know much about Denmark, so I can't, I can't argue that, but huh, yeah, there's that. Thank you for, for that. I appreciate it. You, should, you guys should give this guy a follow. Um, yeah, so that's just one of many Twitter conversations I have on my Twitter. My Twitter account is TheZRhino2 if you want to check it out. I have a lot of discussions there, and if anything ha pops up, it's, uh, it creates good content for videos. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe, and as always, have a nice day.